Hi everybody, in this video we will talk about Blender, about capturing reality with photogrammetry, how to add sunlight on the final object, how to add a tractor and how to manipulate the images, fill holes and optimize all this. And then we will also see how we can export it to the internet. I have prepared some images. It's a Mavic 2 Pro shooting from 2019. We have 89 images and with these 89 images we will do a 3D model with two photogrammetry uh, programs. So we will use Reality Capture. It's for free. And I will also show you how we can use Metashape to do a 3D from this barn. You can download these images and we will see how we can download Reality Capture. So if you go down to the, the links into the comments from the, this video, you can see all the links to download the software and also the images. This video is more like a workshop as you can use my images and directly repeat what I'm doing in the video. First thing we have to uh, download Reality Capture and then you have also to download Blender. The newest version is 3.2.1 and for the other who likes to use Metashape I will later on show in the video how we can use it. If you go into photogrammetry you need fast hardware and you need an NVIDIA graphic card with CUDA cores. That's very important for the calculation. So as you can see on my laptop I use 6000 CUDA cores, 32 GB RAM and on my desktop uh, computer I use 64 GB RAM and I have 4352 CUDA cores. For the laptops it's important that you use an additional cooling system as you can see it on this picture. I've listed the minimum requirements between point 0.1 and 3 for your computer. Now let's talk about the mission with these 89 images. It was a 3D mission with three circles. First circle at minus 20 degree pitch angle, second circle at minus 45 and third circle at minus 60 degree. The 3D spherical mission is one of the most powerful. With only a few images you can get really good results from your object. When you downloaded Reality Capture, you can open the, the software. You will have this screen. We can choose between different layouts. We will use the layout with the three images. And the first thing what we can see, we have here a workflow. So it's explained what we have to do. You can also see the, the help pages for the, the workflow. But as we can see, we have here the inputs. And the first thing we will do is input our images. So I select all the 89 images. They are now here. It's the 28 millimeter from the Mavic 2 Pro. And the first step will be that we align the images. So let's start. The advantage of Reality Capture is that this application is real fast compared to other photogrammetry uh, programs. You can see it took us 11 seconds to do this first alignment. What we can see on this image is the perfect uh, spherical shooting. We can see here the cameras. So it's a typical uh, spherical shooting, it's only a spherical shooting and at the end I walked around the barn, you can see it here, 
these images and took some images from the, the barn. But I repeat, we have only 89 images to do this barn 3D. What we can see here on the screen, it's a big square who shows us the, the whole work uh, room for this shooting. But we will also only uh, concentrate on the barn. So the first step we have to do is to limit the space for the whole calculation. So we go near to the barn. You can also turn this cube. You can check in altitude. And so we will go close to the barn. If you do the, the whole place, you will have too much triangles for the calculation. And as I took the shooting only near this barn, it's important that we go really close to do it. So you can also see that the terra is not flat. So it will be very interesting what will be the result of this 3D shooting. So do something like that, what you can see here on the screen. You can also shift the center if you press on the shift button and use the mouse. You can uh, move the, the square to center it. So now I think it's quite close enough and we will do the next step. The next step is to calculate the model. Here for the calculation we have three qualities, preview quality, normal quality and high quality. Do not use the high quality, the difference will not be uh, <coughs> enough. Do only use the, the normal quality, there's no, no big difference between these two, the, these two calculation methods. Okay, so we do the next step and we work on it to recalculate, to reconstruct it on a 3D model. This will use some more time as the alignment of the images who took us only 11 seconds. So it's time to drink the first coffee. So it took about seven minutes on my computer to calculate it. We can see here the position of the images and it's quite a good result for only 89 images. Now it's time to save the, the work we have done already. So you can press Ctrl S. Now we will add some additional information. You can press on settings. But we can see here on the component zero that we have 89 from 89 cameras. It's depending on your model. You can here have several components. So choose all, always the, the right component to see the, the settings, what you have done already. So if we go to the alignment report, we can see that we have total projections from six from 568,000. If you have more than 1 million, you can reduce this. So it's quite a lot for uh, only 89 cameras and for this small view we have here. If you have too much uh, projections, you can reduce it with the simplify tool. In the next step, we will create the textures. So we will now align images onto the surface of this calculation. It will take several minutes, so it's time for the next coffee. Now we have our textured model.
as I told you, it's quite impressive what we can do with this tool. It took about six minutes to calculate uh, the textures. And the final step will be to export it so that we can import it to Blender. We will use Wavefront object, that's my recently uh, used format, to export it. And we will save it as object file. Now there is the tricky thing. To do so, you have to add some credits to the program. You, it's not free to do so. I will show you uh, on the next step how you can add some credits to export images. In Reality Capture you have different methods to buy license. The most easy method is to use credits. So you can always choose if you will export it and the, the image we done before, the, this barn, it's about $1.5. It depends on the size of the, the image. So if you buy, uh, for example, for $10, you can do uh, about six to seven uh, exports. So it's free up to you to choose what you like. So now we will do the same with Metashape from Agisoft. I already get the 89 images. We will not do uh, automatic patch process, so we will first align the images. So we choose high in the quality and let's go. So it took more than 11 seconds. You can see here the result. We can also see the position of the, the cameras. And now we will do the same thing to align the cube to calculate further. We have similar tools, tools here, so we will first align our cube to this barn. As in reality capture, we go very close to do it. We can also turn to align on the, the barn. So take your time to really align this cube it's important for the final calculation. We can also hide the cams. So it's much easier to do so. I think now we are quite good. So we can get to the further step and calculate deep cloud. We choose the quality high. Now we get all the detail points. As we can see, we have 15 million points. So that's one of the big difference between Archisoft Metashape and Reality Capture we get much more details. So the next step will be that we create the mesh.
now we got the meshed model and the final step will be to add the textures now we can see the textures if I compare with reality capture we get much more detail in Metashape but it takes also longer to calculate the image. We will use the same export format and we will create an object file. So for this workshop we will use the, one of the newest Blender 3.2. I will delete the default square and we will import the wavefront object. We can see here the object file, the MTL file. I will explain later what it is, the MTL file. As it is a huge object, it will take some time to import it. Now we have imported uh, the model. So <coughs> I will show you what we can do uh, here for the first steps. If you will turn the, the view, you can select it here. Then we can have different views. So this is the view with vertices. It's quite a lot of vertices what we have here. Then we can have a look on the texture. And we can also look what happens with the light. Actually, we have no light, so it's light. <clears throat> like in the, the night, what we can see here. So we go back to this view. So the first thing now is to orientate our object. And for this, we have two possibilities. Always select the object. We can rotate it and we can shift it. So first I will rotate it. Also for the axis. And I will center the object. If you click directly on set we have the top view. So we have to align here on this cross so that we are really in the center of the of the view. And <coughs> for the cutoff of the image it's important that we have this road here. I will place a tractor later on this road. And now the first step that we will do is cut off the, the model and then we will add some modifier to reduce the, the model. To cut off the, the model, we will change to edit mode. So we have changed to edit mode. If it's orange, everything is selected. So we have to deselect with a click on the screen. And then we have to add transparency. That's very important to cut off really everything. And now for the selection we have different possibilities. Uh, box select, circle select, lasso select. I will use box select. So important you have to be in transparency mode. I will uh, also choose this road here. But we also can see that we have not enough vertices here. It will be bad texture. So I will cut off this, this uh, stone here. And I will select something like that.
and then we have to invert this selection invert we will press the delete button choose vertices and now we have an image like that that we have the bottom is still here we will cut off that later so next step is to reduce the, the model we will go back to object mode I will deselect transparency and now we will add a modifier decimate we have quite a huge uh, face counts so I will directly put it on 0 0.25 So we have quite reduced the model. We can check the vertices. We have still enough vertices. So that's no problem to go further on with the, the model. We go back to edit mode. We have to add transparency. I will select this button and delete it. Then I will select the whole model. And we will clean up. First thing we do, we delete loose. So this tool removes disconnected vertices and edges. And then we will clean up and fill holes. So that's a new function, it's very powerful. This is different from the face creation operator in three important respects. Holes are detected, so there is no need to manually find and select the edges around the holes. The holes can have a limit for the number of sides. And a very important point, mesh data is copied from surrounding geometry. If you do that all manually, it's very time consuming. So that's a very good function. Now I will go, go back to object mode. So it's still uh, very slow. We have still a lot of vertices. So I will add a modifier to decimate. We can uh, go down here, it's no problem. So we can apply. Now I think it's comfortable to work. So in the next step we will add some light. If I choose the default light We will move it. So what we can do with lights? We can change the light radius. And we can change the light power so that's not the light I like to, to have I will add a sunlight so we go to add light sun we have to move this sun and we can change the angle so you can really play with that 
And now I will also change the intensity of the of this light, the light power. So we can really play with it. If you took the the object in sunlight, you can adapt this light exactly to the capturing of the images. So that seems quite good here, but you can always change it later. So we have here the normal light, the sunlight, and you can add other lights if you like. Now we will import the tractor. You can find the link in the video comments. And it was saved in binary format, so I will choose this here. So it's the New Holland T7 tractor. Import. Now it is here. We can check it here and we have different objects. So before we go further on, I will fuse these objects. I will press join. Now we have one object. I will rename it. And I will move that to my collection. So we have here the tractor. Now it's not in the right position, but that's no problem. So we will move it to this road. And we will place it on the road. Now we have added the tractor to the scene. You can finalize the lights. And then we will see how we can export that to one file. If we go to file, we have external data automatically pack resources. If we now send the Blender file, it's all in it, also the images, the textures. Now let's see the files. We created just the barn Blender file. We have also the texture file. You can reduce this texture file, you can create a JPEG but then you have to modify it in the MTL file. Now what's the MTL file? So in the MTL file we have the texture file and if you change it to a JPEG you have to rename this file. Now let's have a look what's an object file.
An object file is a text file and you can see it's huge. You can zip this file if you upload it to Sketchfab it's possible to zip the, the whole file. You can see here what we saw uh, before in Blender the vertices and the faces. We have reduced them with Decimate. If you like to upload your 3D files on Sketchfab you have different possibilities. I always use the, the basic, the free possibilities, so the maximum file size per model is 100 MB. You can zip the file. If you zip the file you can really upload huge files, as you can see on my own page. If you look on my models, they are below, there are even below 50 MB. So it's really easy to upload for free and then to use it on the internet. I hope you enjoyed this workshop. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.